Hello guys, my name is Peter. I will be taking you through introduction on Windows. Let's get started. So the first thing is to ask ourselves what is a computer. So we can say a computer is a machine that accepts data, processes it, stores it and output the information. So we show you types of computer device that I'm referring to. The first one is the desktop computer. And then we have the laptop. We have a smartphone. And then we have a calculator. What is the difference between data and information? Since we have already said the computer captures data. So what is this data? So data refers to the raw facts that are yet to be processed and is meaningless to the user. So the example is Guido or one or one plus one. It does not have any meaning. Information refers to data that has already been processed. Example is Guido is a dog. You have some information about Guido now. You know Guido refers to a dog. So one plus one is equal to two. So you know where two has come from. So that is information. So the other thing is components of the computer. So we have the hardware and the software. So the hardware is the computer term that refers to the physical components of the computer. And the software is the set of instructions that direct the hardware to perform a particular task. Hardware is divided into four parts. So we have the input device. We have the CPU or the central processing unit. We have the storage and then we have the output devices. Input devices help the user to enter data into the computer. So we have example, a keyboard, there it is. We have a mouse, we have a microphone, we have a barcode reader, and then we have a, a scanner. So these are the few examples of input devices. The other thing is we have the central processing unit. So the CPU is the brain of the computer system. It is the most important part of any computer. It accepts instructions and data, decodes and executes instructions and stores results in the memory for data display. So when you hear the word decodes, it means converting from human readable format to machine readable format. Decodes it's about conversion. So when you enter data into the machine, it accepts data that is human readable form. Maybe you have entered English like structure statement in the computer. So the machine does not understand that. It only understands in binary, which is referred to as machine language. So it should convert that so that you can be able to understand whatever you, you mean. And that's what we refer to as decode. So the first thing it will accept, decode the code convert and then execute instruction and store the result in the memory for data display. The thing is about storage. So storage first the means of storing data and instruction. It is divided into two. You have the internal memory and the external memory. The internal memory, it's called the main memory or primary memory. And it is located near the CPU and stores the data and instruction just before and immediately after the CPU process them. It includes programs that are currently running on a machine, intermediate results of arithmetic operations, immediate versions of documents being word processed, and data that represents the pictures displayed on a computer screen. And uh, the internal memory, we have two types. We have the RAM and ROM. So RAM refers to random access memory, which holds the list of instructions or data that is currently running on a machine. RAM is known as volatile, so when you say volatile, it means content can be lost when power is lost. So the main advantage of RAM is that it can be accessed randomly, as the name suggests. This means the computer can get at any piece of data directly without looking through the, the storage that's making it fast. For example, I can be able, if I have opened three tabs, I can access any of them randomly. That's making it fast. RAM is important factor in determining a computer's speed, meaning the more the amount of RAM, the faster the computer. For example, if I have 2GB and someone else has 8GB, that person who has 8GB can be able to access many things at the same time, unlike me who has 2GB. So ROM refers to as read-only memory. So this is where the computer stores its low-level programs. So the one that tells it how to treat various kinds of input devices. Computers typically contain a small amount of ROM that holds small programs for starting up the computer. So the amount of ROM does not change, meaning once the computer is assembled, you can read it, but you cannot write on it. When you say read, it means you can be able to view, 
but when we say write it means you can be able to add something delete or update something in computer terms so also this memory is known as non-volatile meaning its content remain unchanged even when the power is turned off so in case of power loss your content will still remain in rom have the external memory so external memory is called external storage it uses different types of media such as magnetic disk referred to as hard disk magnetic tapes the other media is optical disk so under optical disk we have dvds and also you cds but we have not mentioned it here and also we have the flash memory which is also called flash disk to store data and information like this type of memory allows permanent storage so that's many external storage media are portable and moved from one place to another so when you say something is portable means it can be used in one computer and also can be used in other computer the amount of data that computer process and store is measured in bits and bytes so a bit is a binary digit it means either a zero or a one a standard group of eight bits make up a byte so one character represents one byte one kilobyte is equivalent to 10 24 bytes so 1 MB or 1 megabyte is equivalent to 1024 kilobyte. 1 gigabyte is equivalent to 1024 megabyte. So 1 TB is equivalent to 1024 GB. We have now output devices. So an output device is any piece of computer, hardware, equipment which converts information into human readable form. Okay. It can be text, graphics, audio, and video. So some of the output devices are visual, display units, video, IE monitor, printer, protas, speakers, etc. So the computer monitor provides a soft copy of the information while the printer provides the hard copy of information. So we have some examples. I have a printer here. We have a monitor. We have headphones. We have sound card. We have speaker. We have video card. We have plotter. And we have GPS location. And we have a project a projector here so these are some of the examples of output devices so how a computer works so the first thing we start with the input and then after input we go to processing unit and the processing unit we have two two units we have the storage unit here and we have arithmetic logic unit and we have output Booting refers to the process of starting up your computer we have two types of booting we have called booting and one booting so called booting is, is when you switch on your computer and it performs power on self test so you do that by pressing the power button on your cpu and then one booting it happens where you press reset button or restart button on running computer or press control alt delete on your keyboard to restart and that happens when you computer stops responding or it hangs the other thing you should learn is how to classify computers so we have four categories we have supercomputers we have mainframe computers mid-range computers and we have micro computers so we start with supercomputers so supercomputers are the most powerful computers at any given time they the largest in physical size and most expensive so mostly used in universities, research institutions, government agencies and large corporations engaged in research and development. So they usually cost at least one million dollars. They are manufactured by IBM, Cray, Fujitsu, Hitachi and NEC. They contain multiple processors that let them perform parallel processing and run at a greater speed. So uses of our supercomputers, we have the calculation of satellite orbits whether forecasting, genetic decoding, or the DNA, optimization of oil exploration, and simulated testing of products that they cannot otherwise be tested because of the price or physical difficulty, as in the case of building a space station, commercial aircraft. So here I have uh, put an image uh, that shows you a type of a supercomputer. So the other category of computer is mainframe computers. They cost uh, several thousand to several hundred thousand dollar so business like bank insurance companies and large retail chains universities use them ibm fujistu and unisize are some mainframe manufacturers so the processing power is often not higher than that of the fastest pc which is the supercomputer they often have a 
multiple processors and their memory has significantly larger in terms of ter terabytes. Here is the picture of a mainframe computer. We have mid-range computers. So mid-range computers or mini are, the sm are smaller than the mainframe and less powerful. They are usually used as a shared resource, serving hundreds of users that connect to them from personal computers. They are found inside one company and they serve several hundred of people. They use multiple processors. So IBM, yes, slash 400, HP 9000, and HP Alpha families are examples of mid-range computers. And here we have a picture of mid-range computer. Okay. So we have microcomputers, another category. So microcomputers is a collective name of all personal computers, PCs, notebook computers, or laptops, and handheld uh, computers like the smartphones. Parts of a keyboard is another element that you are going to learn. It is a microcomputer input device that is commonly used. So usually it is made up of circuit board and other related electric components that generate a unique electronic code when each key is pressed. It has five main areas. We have number one, functional keys. Here they are, starting from F1 to F12. I think you can see on your keyboard. The functional keys are used as shortcut to commonly used commands okay for example if i want to shut my computer i will press alt and f4 on my keyboard the other category is the type in area so the type in area is combined of a to z and symbols and numbers so on a keyboard it is located from here all the way to here and then we have miscellaneous or modifier keys So tab is located here okay. and then uh, we have the enter key here it's the return or enter key we have two we have this one we have this one and this one and then we have uh, we have escape escape is here and then we have shift shift is here and also here we have two of them and then we have we have control control is here and also here on your keyboard the special purpose or miscellaneous or modifier keys are used in conjunction with other keys to perform a desirable command. And then we have the arrow keys or the directional keys or cursor control keys. So they are located here. We have four of them. We have this, 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 and this. They dedicate the movement of cursor in all direction of the window. For example, upward, downward, rightward, and leftward. Other parts of the keyboard include the numeric or the calculator keypad. So it's located on your right hand side. It is in two folds. It is used to produce numbers and in some instances used to perform cursor control functions when the num lock power is off. So when the num lock here is where you see here you have the status lights where you shall see if if it's off, it's used like this case, the directional keys. Where well, number eight is for up, four is used for uh, left, and number six is used for right, and then number two is used for downward. But when the status light is on for the num lock, it is used for for calculations. So we have the toggle keys. So toggle keys are either on or off. When you press the key, light goes on. When you press again, the light goes off. And you the light that I'm talking about is the status light. So we have three of them. We have the caps lock, scroll lock, and num lock. So the caps lock is it is here. When you press, you can see the light will turn on. And uh, the caps lock is used to convert all the alphabets into uppercase or capital letters. And when you press again, it will go back to normal. Okay. Lowercase. Scroll lock is somewhere here. Stop the movement of a listing of items on the screen. And then you have the num lock, the one that we talked about. And then we have others called the web browser commands like back and forward are found in some keyboards. Then you have musical keys. Some keyboards have them, others don't. 
we have windows start key windows start key is here and also here it has a window like icon and also we have a many shortcut key so we proceed so you have the mouse trackball and a trackpad so a mouse is an input device that controls an on-screen pointer to facilitate the point and click approach to executing different operations the following are some of the actions that a mouse can perform we have right clicking left clicking we have double clicking we have drag and drop and right clicking The practical part we are going to see what we mean by that and then you have double clicking so double clicking is when you click the left mouse button twice in a, to invoke an icon or a selection and you do it fast and then you have drag and drop so hold down an icon using the left mouse button and move it along with the pointer and drop it anywhere on the desktop so that's what you refer to as drag and drop and then you have a trackpad like the one that is found on a on a laptop so a user controls the cursor by moving his or her finger along a touch sensitive pad then you have a touch screen like the one that you have on your phone okay so may serve both as an input and output device we have another category that i didn't mention of input device and output so the examples include the digital camera it has both input and output another example is the smartphone the one that you're using so a smartphone can be either be classified as input or an output so the most common output device is the computer monitor it looks like the or use the similar technology as that of the television screen so there are two types of monitors we have the clt cathode ray tube and then you have the flat panel display or the lcd all the LED images on the monitors are made up of small dots called pixels. So, on your screen, small dots are the ones that are joined to form the image that you see. So, the other thing we are going to learn is about printer. So, two basic types based on the technology they use to create images on a paper. So, we have the non impact and impact printers. On my right hand side here, you can see we have the printer. And then you have impact printers. We have two examples, Daisy Wheel and Dot Matrix. And then you have non impact printers. And under that, we have Inkjet, Damo, Phaser. And down here, you can see some of the examples of those printers. So the other thing that we are going to learn is about storage. For us to maintain programs, data, and information for data use, data must be stored in a non-volatile medium, means a medium that retains data even when not connected to electric power. So we use the external storage media to move stored data from one computer to the other, portability, and to back up data in case of loss of the originals. And then we have the example of external storage we have the magnetic disk so magnetic disk are already used storage medium so magnetic disk include the hard disk and floppy disk so information is stored on disk by coding magnetized spots on the disk surface so we have the 3.5 inch floppy disk this one so pc come with at least one hard disk so this is the hard disk that i'm talking about uh, built in or fixed so the other storage media you have is the optical disk so optical disk comprise of a disk or the compact disk and the digital video disk or dvds here is the dvd here is the cd so the last category you have is the solid state storage under that we have the flash disk we have the memory disk so this is the adapter so this one is the one that is used for cameras to store pictures being taken and then you have the ssd meaning solid state disk so it is the latest technology 
and it is much greater than that of the hard disk. The CPU is a silicon chip with multiple circuits. The CPU is commonly the computer brain where all processing takes place. It consists of two units, the control unit and the arithmetic logic unit. So the units store and process data. So it carries signals and that execute all processing within a computer. So modern processors such as the Intel Pentium 4, we have Core i7, are capable of performing more than one task at a time. For example, I can be able to open a Word document. At the same time, I can be able to listen music. Well, typing, maybe. We have control unit. So control unit is under CPU. So control unit determines which program instruction to execute, interpret the instruction, and causes the instruction to be executed. We have arithmetic logic unit, the part of the CPU where all the arithmetic and logic operations take place. So arithmetic operations include addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponential, and then the logic operations compare numbers and strings of character, and we use these symbols to represent the operations. The thing we are going to learn is the machine cycle. When a program starts running in a computer, the CPU performs a routine of sequence. The first thing, it fetches the instructions, and then after fetching, it decodes. So decodes, we say it's about conversion. It will convert from one format to the other, so that it can be understood by the machine. And then after it has been understood, it will be executed and it is stored in the memory, with a display, and that process makes the machine cycle. For a simple arithmetic function, the control unit, the one that we had talked about, fetches instruction from a program in a primary memory and decodes it. The control unit transmits this code to the other part of the CPU. And then the arithmetic logic unit, which executes the instructions, so the control unit takes the results and stores it in the primary memory. We have CPU speed. So the CPU speed contains a clock, which uh, along with the control unit is used to coordinate all of the computer's components. So the clock sends out a regular electronic pulse, which uh, synchronizes or keep in time all the components. The frequency of the pulse is known as the clock speed. The clock speed is measured in hertz. So the greater the speed, the more instruction can be performed in any given moment of a time. In the 1980s, processors commonly ran at a rate of between 3 MHz and 5 MHz, which is 3 million to 5 million pulses or hertz or cycles per second. So today, processors commonly run at a rate of between 3 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz which is 3 billion or uh, to 5 billion pulse or cycles per second I'm going to go to the word so the data word is the maximum number of bits that the control unit can fetch from primary memory in one machine cycle you will realize the computer that we have right now either use 32 bit or 64 bit so when you have that 2 bit, you just fetch only that 2 bits and 64 bit will fetch 64 bits. So you see that the 64 bit will fetch a larger amount of data than the that 2 bit. And you're going to purchase a computer, better to choose the 64 bit if you have both 64 and 32. You choose 64 bit because it's going to fetch a lot of bits in one machine cycle. Okay. So how do we measure the computer power it's when we have the three major factors and factor number one is processing speed the other factor is memory capacity and the other one is number of processor we have the system bus or bus so it refers to the signal path used to transmit signals usually from the cpu another component we have types of buses we have number one address bus and then number two we have data bus and number three we have control bus so data bus carries memory addresses from the processor to other components such as primary storage have data bus carries the data between the processor and other components 
A data bus is bidirectional. It means it goes both directions. Either it transmits or it receives. We have the control bus. It carries control signals from the processor to the other components. So the control bus also carries the clock pulse. So the control bus is unidirectional. It goes in only one direction. We have the software. So software in simple terms, it's a set of instructions that guide the hardware. The term software is used to mean both data and program. So program manipulates data to produce to produce re desirable results. We classify software into three. So we have the application software, we have software development tools, and we have system software. So we begin with application software. Any program designed to be carried out by a computer to satisfy a user specific need is called the application software. So examples of uh, application software include the word processing software, then you have the spreadsheet, we have the internet browsing software, desktop publishing software, graphic representation software, we have accounting software, and we have database management software. So in other language, uh, the application software are designed to help the user. User is a person like you and me who are able to interact with the computer. This application software is the one that we refer to as the computer packages that we are going to learn. They help us to achieve some desirable goals. So for example, if I want to write a letter to somebody, I will use Microsoft Word to write the letter and either send using an email or maybe print. We have the software development tools. So these are the software that are used by programmers to design those application softwares. The other category is system software or the operating system. These are the programs that run other softwares. The most important program that runs on a computer so without an OS, no application can run on a computer. So we have some few examples. The one that you know of is the Android, the Windows, okay, that we use. Uh, some of the examples of the operating system. Other examples, you can see them. Okay, we have the Linux, Mac OS, MS-DOS, NetWare, OS-400. We have from OS, OS is Unix, Windows, Android, Windows CE that is used for handheld computers. Functions of operating systems include the load programs. Okay, so when you want to open a program, so it's the function of the operating system to help you load that program. It allocates memory for a program. So in short, when you open a program in your RAM, it's the function of operating system to allocate that program some memory within RAM. It manages storage media manages computer resources, perform input stroke output control, and also it provides user interface where so you can be able to know maybe this icon represents gallery, this other icon represents folder, this one represents my computer. So that one uses graphical user interface to help the user to understand a certain operation in a computer without him or her having ever interacted with the machine before. Other forms of user interface include command line. So this one is where you had to give certain commands for a computer to operate. So in short, if you didn't know the command, you could not be able to use the computer. We have threads and the enemies of computers. So we have power failure. So power failure, when you don't have power, you won't be able to use the computers, viruses. So viruses refers to the harmful programs that makes our computer behave abnormally. How do you get rid of viruses? Number one is by installing antivirus programs. Another thing is by frequently scanning a flash disk or those removable disks before using them. If you have a flash disk, you scan it before you use it. Since it can transmit virus to your computer and to also to avoid downloading the uh, content from uh, unprotected 
websites on your computers so we have hackers and crackers so hackers these are people who access your computer without your consent and can either take your things or maybe blackmail you to give them money so that maybe they cannot expose you the uh, threat is the hard disk failure so when your hard disk fails you cannot be able to get the content that are in your computers the other thing is constant change of technologies technology keeps on advancing each and every day and when this phone or this computer comes out today tomorrow another one comes so keeping up with technology is a bit tricky so that marks the end of introduction so now we are going to go to windows and thank you for listening i hope you have understood and enjoyed the lesson i'm going to reach there goodbye